All right, we're going to solve some equations by substitution. This is an algebra review, but these kind of problems are going to appear in the geometry lessons. So I want to make sure that you know how to do them. There are some tips here in the middle that you can read that can be helpful for this. The directions, solve each system of equations by substitution. If the system does not have exactly one solution, state whether it has no solutions or infinitely many. So the first thing we have here in our tips is if possible, you may want to transform one or both sides of your equation, such as getting rid of fractions or decimals. Well, this first problem, we don't have any of those. We're going to put a box around the first two equations, just as a note-keeping guide to try to keep track of where things are. Step one, in one of the equations, solve for a variable. Now, it looks like to me that the first equation, solving it for x, is going to be the easiest thing to do. And in fact, the first equation is already solved for x. So that's done. Step two, substitute for the variable into the other equation. So I'm going to take the second equation, and every place that I see an x, I'm not going to write an x, I'm going to substitute in its place a 7, since x and 7 are the same. Step three, solve that equation. Well, if I solve this equation, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides, and then divide by 5, and I'm going to get 1. The solution to this is the ordered pair 7, 1. If I were to graph these two equations, they would cross each other at the ordered pair 7, 1. The x value is 7, the y value is 1, so we are finished. Let's try the next one. We got two equations, y equals 9 and 2x minus 4y equals negative 40. We don't have any decimals or fractions, so we don't have to do any transformations here. Step one, then, in one of the equations, solve for a variable. I'm going to solve the first equation for 9. I'm going to take the other equation and write it down. I'm sorry, I'm solving the first equation for y, which happens to be 9. I'm going to replace every y in the other equation with a 9, because that's what it's equal to. Then I'm going to simplify this equation and get x by itself. A minus 4 times a 9 is a minus 36. If I add 36 to both sides, I get 2x is negative 4. If I divide both sides by 2, I get x is negative 2. So the solution to this is negative 2, 9. If we were to graph these two equations, they would cross at the ordered pair negative 2, 9. Number 3. This one's a little more complicated than the first two. Because although y is by itself in one of the equations, it's equal to an expression, 3x minus 2, not just a number. We continue to solve it the same way. We're going to take the other equation and replace the y in it with a 3x minus 2. When you substitute, you need to use parentheses. It's important because we have this negative here. And that negative has to be distributed inside the parentheses. So if we distribute the negative, we're going to have 3x minus 3x plus 4 equals 7. Combine like terms, a plus 3x and a minus 3x cancels. So we get 4 equals, sorry, that shouldn't be a 4. It should be a 2. My apologies. We end up with 2 equals 7. If you're solving one of these equations and you end up with no variables, just numbers, either ends up being a true equation or a false equation. If it's a false equation, because 2 does not equal 7, it means this has no solution. There is no ordered pair that makes these equations true. And the reason that could happen, because these two lines, if we were to graph them, they would be parallel to each other. If they're parallel, it means they're in the same plane and they never intersect. If we were to finish this problem, we end up with a true equation such as 6 equals 6, then the answer would be infinitely many solutions. That's going to happen sometimes. Number four. We don't have any decimals or fractions. So step one, get one of the equations, get one of the variables by itself in one of the equations. Y is already by itself in the first equation. Take the other equation, and every place you see a y, we're going to replace it 
with whatever y is equal to, and it's equal to a negative 2x plus 5. Simplify this equation so that you can get x by itself. If I distribute the 2, I'm going to get negative 4x. 2 times 5 is 10. If I combine like terms, a minus 4x and a plus 2x is a negative 2x. If I subtract 10 from both sides, then divide both sides by negative 2, I get x is 5. Once we know x is 5, well, this is a step we've never had to do before. It's step 4. Substitute the value of the variable into the other equation and solve it. So I'm going to put this 5 right in here for x into this other equation. If I simplify this, the negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. So the solution to this, the ordered pair that makes this equation true is the ordered pair 5, negative 5. Next problem, number five. This one is more complicated because there are, in fact, fractions in this. You could solve it with the fractions in it, but you're likely going to want to do it without having them in it. So I, you can do these things in lots of different orders. I'm going to get rid of my fractions. How would I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply every term in the first fraction by 7. And the reason I would do that, because 7 divided by 7 cancels. Now we don't have a 7 in the bottom of that fraction. In this middle fraction, we have a denominator of 3. So I'm going to multiply each term also by 3. The 3's cancel. So this first equation, after some work, ends up being, we got a 3 times 4 times x. That's 12x. We have a 7 times negative 2 times y. That's a minus 14y. And we have a 3 times 7 times 2. That is a 42. Now, if you recognize that this equation could be simplified more, you're welcome to do so, but you don't have to. What I mean by simplified more is that we could, if we wanted, divide each of these terms by 2. That would give us smaller numbers, which most people appreciate smaller numbers. You don't have to do that. I'm then going to evaluate each of these equations, this one and this one. Which one's going to be easier to get a variable by itself? It's the one I haven't used yet. I'm going to divide each term by 2. If I do that, I'm going to get y equals negative x plus 10. Once y is by itself, I'm going to substitute into my red equation. For every y, I'm going to replace it with a negative x plus 10. If I distribute the minus 7, it's going to be a plus 7x minus 70 equals 21. If I combine like terms, 6x and 7x is 13x. If I add 70 to both sides, and if I divide both sides by 13, I get x is 7. Once we know that's 7, we're going to plug the 7 into the blue equation and for the x. When you substitute, you use parentheses. A negative 7 plus 10 is a 3. So this is the ordered pair 7, 3. x is first and y is second. Number 6. This one has decimals. If you don't want decimals, then multiply every term by the same number to get rid of your decimals. I'm going to multiply every term by 100 in the second equation. You don't have to do this, but I believe if you choose to do this, you're going to be more successful than if you don't do this. If I multiply each of those by 100, I'm going to get 75x plus 15y equals 255. You may recognize now that I could divide each of those numbers by something if I want. You can divide them by 5, or by 3, or by 15 to get smaller numbers. I won't do it for this one just to show you you don't have to. The first equation, I want to solve for one of the variables. I want to get x by itself. I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides of the equation. 
So on my red equation, I'm going to replace the x value with a negative 2y minus 2. I'm going to solve that equation for y. If I distribute to 75, I'm going to get negative 150y minus 75 plus 15y equals 255. You got really big numbers. So having divided all the terms by 15 earlier probably would have been a good idea. Combine like terms, we're going to get negative 135y minus 75 is 255. Add 75 to both sides. You know what? I made a mistake. This shouldn't be 75. Let me point this out. When I distribute the 75, I've got to multiply 75 times 2. It's going to be 1 to 50. My apologies. If I add 150 to both sides, I'm going to get negative 135y equals 405. If I divide both sides by negative 135, I'm going to get y is negative 3. Figure out what the x value is. I'm going to replace the y value up here with a negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. The solution for this is 4, negative 3, x first, y second. That concludes our lesson. Thank you very much.